the first thing is set adjust agenda. Does anybody have any changes or amendments, additions? No, okay. no, I'll get Haley Brock to the chair. So that's okay. nice. Yeah, okay. uh, communication from the audience. Does anybody have anything to share that's not on the agenda? You can chime in when it comes. Paul? Just quickly. Can you state your name? I'm sorry, Paul Fix. I live in America. I am, on the agenda, it doesn't specifically state that we're looking for comments from. Requesters during the ARPA funding, will we be given opportunities to speak to your evaluations of our proposals? Yes. It does. It says to include feedback from any of the requesters if present. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, yes, we'll accept your feedback of any kind. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we generally have to have input. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so first is item one, select or choose 20 year or 30 year term for the for the bomb and the wastewater project. And this is something that we didn't just have a choice on. Okay, so we went in thinking it could be 30. When we first submitted the application, they came back and said, no, you can go 20 because most of this is a equipment and so that's what we went with. and then when we just did the amendment for the additional seventy five thousand, it came back and they had it as 30 so i questioned it and they said well we calculated like that three so you could go 30. um i have talked with alders and elliot and he's like yeah you, you can do that but keep in mind that some parts of the project will likely need to be addressed again before the 30 years is up so then you're kind of you know, you're fine, it's about 30 years, and it might be the tension again in 20. Yep. But it all comes down to, you know, it's, it's significantly less on the debt service. So uh, it's a no out 30. Does it make any difference on our how much net interest we pay at the end? Yeah, yeah. It's about 30. So well, there's there is the subsidy, but keep in mind we're still going to have a loan of two point two seven five million, and then we still have to talk to costs about that. So our loan amount is that will be our that will be the amount that we borrow. Our what was our what was our interest? So it's basically it's almost a forty thousand dollar difference. What's the, the um, what would the interest? Because that would help ratepayers, right? Thing 20 years at 138 versus 30 years at 101. 
I'm just doing it. I just did an amortization calculator on the loan amount, 20 years, 2%. It shows, um, and then the annual, the rent annual schedule, and then total interest is 480,000. And is the annual payment correct? Uh -huh. Right here, the 44 plus the 93, um, this one's for 20. Yep, and that's like 138,000. So, so oh, I'm sorry, what's the difference in the interest? 487 and 752. 300 and something. Well, it's 37,000 in 10 years. So that's 372 more in debt service for the 30 years. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't have subtraction wrong. Yes. Paul, do you have another comment? Well, the comment I make is for those of us in the water system, some of this work will need to be redone. Sooner than 30 years. So maybe while you, potentially. So while you're extending the payments and reducing them, you might be adding more at the end while you're still paying for things. Like that's that's there is exactly the discussion. So well, that's why I, I hadn't heard it mentioned. So I'm, that's what Casey said in the intro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the argument is we either pay a little bit less for longer or more for shorter, right? That's the Mr. Paulson, I yeah. have that experience in the water waste water world. You know, the I'm hoping for a brand new plant for <laughs> 30 years. But no, um, like they're replacing the lagoon liners, the lagoon liners. One of them has been replaced, one of them hasn't. Yeah. So that's the whole life of the plant. So hopefully since, since 70s, 70s. Right. And then if we do the add alternates, yeah. the grit collector, the boiler, the, you know, the boiler isn't a huge cost if you had to replace it um and blowers really the, the blowers are the big ticket item other than the okay um so those might be more like a 20 year item and we could put those on a, a replacement schedule yeah so it's i you know i'm always for paying as much as you can yeah for a short period of time sure. so i can take that motion back so we, we can, can, we can do it again. Again. That's fine. You already seconded it. That's okay. Fine. No one has so any now it's on the table. You can't start it. So sure you can sit the chair and say no. <laughs> to second it does not necessarily just support it. It means this so is one of the strengths. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So just to recap, so, it sounds yes. like if we pay, if we stick with the 20 year, then we can pay less long run because of the you almost just for the past life, yes. Over life of loan, yes. Yeah. It doesn't help with debt loans through debt servicing, but over the life of loan, certainly. But, but every year we're paying for $37,000 more. So I'm going to ask these authority for rates. Which are already in the way. Yeah, so okay, so the most on the table is to do the 30. 30 year. So, all in favor of doing 30 year, please say aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. Any abstentions? So, the motion fails. <laughs> so, more discussion. Here, so we're going to do over 20 years, but then 20 years will go by really fast. Oh, we That's 20 years, so yeah. we'll be good. Yeah. Uh, all right, sounds good. Next is uh, item two select board to review our request received to include feedback from the requesters if present. Um, Oh. I just wanted to start by saying um, thank you guys for coming in person. And I know I have a bunch of questions. I'm going to post in a couple of questions. So I'm, I'm just wondering if it makes sense to, just in terms of the process, yeah. to hear, to talk to those um, community members who are here for their specific projects and then have a discussion at the end just about general process of how we're going about. Sure. Phase. Does that make sense? General process. Like, well, like, are we? Because we, we didn't necessarily decide that we're going to 
give dollars away today necessarily. Right. Um, and I think there will be a lot of calculating we'll have to do. We're just there, like, there were some questions that I know Danny emailed me some um, thoughts. So That's a major one. So does it make sense to just kind of start with these four applications? And sure. Then... Yeah. Uh, there's more ones online. Oh, great. So, yeah. Sure. That would, that's great with me. Uh, all right. So I'll just roll through the list. And if somebody's here, or if we have questions, so why don't we just roll through and see if we have questions? Okay. Yeah. And then some base. Okay. So first on our list is Caledonia Grange number nine. Does anybody have questions about that request? So that was the one I think submitted by Robert. Oh, it's in there. For, and it's requesting $40,000 for a green accessibility project. And a bunch of other funding sources for this. Yeah. So did, it, did anybody have questions about this? Yeah. And if anybody here want to add anything that's not already been submitted? Well, I'm here if anybody have any questions, but I would just um, emphasize how important the green building is to the East Hardware community, mainly but um, the larger area as well as a, as a meeting place, um, event place and even though it's been used quite effectively for that in the past everything has been contradictions to uh, band practices and music events uh, meetings animation workshops um it's limited because the accessibility is it's not suited to anybody who can't find some stairs to get into the building so we've been working on the building in the lobby, we put a new roof on, updated some wiring, and done some other things. But the accessibility is our next and sort of most important priority. And even though it's um, it's a big it's a big project, the funding we could get from Arthur, we could leverage to get um, potentially get other grants that ask for national funds. It would put us a long way towards uh, doing the project. Uh, okay. Thank you. And this is really a follow up question. Um, just a quick question, Steve, for the, um, and we, do, we basically are looking at kind of like a summary. I know the application, there's a lot of these details in there. Um, and you mentioned that there's some of the funding that got through the preservation trust went towards the roof, right? And electric, there have been a lot of there have been a yeah. lot of things done to the Grange building so yeah. far, right? Yes. Okay. And what, this, in fact, the wiring that we did, I don't remember exactly whether that was uh, preservation trust funding, but that was a sort of prerequisite for um, getting a lift in. If we were going to do a lift, we had to upgrade the lift. So we've done that. Great. So they left. That's a big okay. Great. That answers the question. So maybe cultural facilities. The wiring. Yeah. Pardon? The cultural facilities grant. Oh, yeah. right. And it's oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Matching each other. Great. So if you if you received ARPA funds, you would essentially have almost half of your project costs. With these rates so far. Yeah, it's hard to know uh, in, the, in the narrative, the longer in the narrative, it points out that we've got an estimate of something like $120,000 to move back. Um, so it's only not over 300. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't really know. And we also, we were really thinking the design that we got back then may, it may become less than that, uh, less work than the original envisioned, but. Uh, until we get some more funding, we're not going to really finalize the design and the plans yet. Yeah. So, I just have a really quick logistical harbor question as we're going through these. So, um, the town has to spend these funds by 
a certain time. If we are giving funds to other organizations, do they also have to spend those funds by that same deadline? That's a good question. I think I would say we spend it, like we give it to somebody, we're done. We spent it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we can so we could say we just write a chat to somebody who okay. spent that money. Okay, so we're we would be holding that until the project is completed and then we're basically giving those funds to the organizations in the next couple of months and then calling that spent. Is that okay? Great. Or we could choose to say we want to wait and commit those funds after we see X, Y, and Z. Right. Because yes. we, we agree still agree. have time, right? We still have a while before we have to spend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We spent the yeah. 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 Interest rates are going up. That's a good point. Wait till the last minute. <laughs> why, why this first until it's, you know, yeah, no rush. Not as long as, no, yeah, as long as it's ready to sink a shot on the ground. That's what those other places do to all of us. That's, so <laughs> <much>. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't think I'm back. Make money off of money. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Great. Let's, uh, so the next on our item two is civic standard. Does anybody have questions about this? They're looking for, they're asking that we pay their lease for 18 months, is what they're looking for. So about half of what we asked for is to cover the the costs of you know keeping the building. We're not being charged rent, so that's an in kind donation from the landowner. Um, so it's the costs of you know internet, lights, water, basic stuff. Other half of the cost is to um, be able to pay people to to keep the building open as much as possible, so that it can be um, an open door on Main Street collaborative space for you know kids coming down from Hazen, people who are in town, kind of a community cultural community center is one way we've talked about it. Um, you know, it's not a social services center. Um, it, it's a place that we're going to um, be collaboratively building cultural events. So it's essential for that part of our mission that we have an office, you know, but I noticed that one of the comments was bad location, and I just want to point out that this project is actually using multiple locations. So that location is our office headquarters, but as we have done for years, we will continue to do programming in the Grange Hall, in the Townhouse, in Atkins Field, and we hope in new and other venues um, that we're starting to talk to about collaborations. So just to point that out, yes, we're asking for support for that specific space, but we're also asking for support to pay people to help us to run this programming, to keep that office open, to be able to offer stipends for teenagers and students that are involved with our work. So in a way, there's like two pieces to the request. They're about half and half, 25 and 27 roughly. Um, and just while I'm yammering on, I just wanna say that any amount for us would be really meaningful to leverage further funding as a new nonprofit, you know, for private funders and for federal grants to see that we have any investment, any support from our town government would be deeply meaningful. So just wanted to say that. Thank you. <laughs> Can you state your name for the record? Rose Friedman. So I'm just thinking that um, when we get to town meeting day and our budget that surely you guys are planning to add a nonprofit organization ask for an appropriation as well. Um yeah uh potentially if mm -hmm. but if you receive some yes yeah. maybe that would be held off for that. Yeah I mean I want to make sure we had I'm just to... saying I'm just you know because yeah. these are places to go for yeah. yeah. the way to do it. Yeah. Well, my other question too is there an economic development fund that apply for as a nonprofit that is does that extend to nonprofits as well? For loans. For loans. That would potentially be a question for the season. We'd have to look at our professional fair policy or something. I don't think it 
and it talks about what kind of borrower. Um, the only problem is a nonprofit is a lot of times there's no guarantors, right? Because there's a profit, so they can choose to be like a corporation or an LLC or sole proprietor, where you can have somebody personally guarantee the debt. Um, well, I'm sure that's the case for the nonprofit, but I don't think our policy specifically talks about or addresses what types of entities. I think it's more about what the purpose is. But so. it's a loan, right? Here. All right. Uh, number three in our list is the Prosperity Care Center. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we have uh, the select board have questions about this. Mm -hmm. Kathy, do you want? You want to say something, or if that wasn't in your application, or oh, well, <coughs> I don't know that. Oh, state know. your name, please. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy. Helms. Uh, I just want to say that uh, the care center is one of two facilities to buy for elders in our community that they are separately in the home. And they're very important institutions for these elderly and their families, and they provide employment. And um, the pandemic made abundantly clear that the way the place was constructed 25 years ago is not adequate for today's needs and possible future pandemics and other issues. So we have to do the HVAC system and the kitchen. We got most of the money from the HVAC system. But and we were in the process, we got applications out for the kitchen project. But like everybody else's projects, the cost goes up daily. So we're just continuing to raise money from every place we can think of. And we have at least a quarter of the residents currently, of the 24 residents, we don't have 24 now, we have 22, are hardwood residents. We have a very significant of course, a hybrid residence and residence there. So um, I don't think it's unreasonable to support in this small amount. Every little bit's going to help us get there. And what other towns are you approaching for our funds? Albany, Grassbury, Greensboro, Lover. Those are the ones that the catchment area. Yeah. Uh, all, all right. Uh, next is the East Hardwood Neighborhood Organization. Uh, there were two of them. Uh, one was and they didn't actually ask for any money. It was more a. Uh, um, it was an idea. This is, this is a meeting we have for the board of figures. Now we have the, um, the radar speed signs and then the traffic guardrails for the late sleeping right? So this one was our sidewalk. And then this one was in the very desk. There was no But there was no one to pass through. Okay. Oh, so this is sidewalks and. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to do this before the comments. I would just say it would be really nice to have. Portion of our funds on something specifically is further, whether it's any one of these projects, but um, especially since the funds are derived from basically like how many people live in town, that it would mean a lot to the village to choose something. I think the sidewalks are a huge project, so we kind of would be able to collect all, even with the articles we have, we wouldn't be able to fund all of that. But whether it was maybe one of these late requests, which could be a very quick. Let's get some guards of Cedar Street, Bethany needs some guardrails. Um, what we have lots of places to do, but um, either we could fund some of these um, private things, or we could have a later discussion about sidewalks in the future. But that's just my perspective. Really, yeah, I'm thinking those are using the most of the time or the range, like something, something that's sort of specific and Just yeah. to the sidewalks and stuff like that. 
or yes. Yeah. Just to know the planning commission just did a walk on it that the one where we be receiving them walk on it and it just had identify a couple of things based on that information to see a better more comprehensive thing for sidewalks and but also guardrails, other things that are issues with sidewalks or pathways, crosswalks. Working it into the budget is all I do. Something that we can do that. I've, I've personally been on a walking audit in the startup, and there are several things that should need to be addressed ASAP in terms of walkability and guardrail safety. Mm -hmm. um, so I think either we write it into the budget and get it done ASAP or, you know, yeah. Why did you see that walk audit report so we can make, this mm -hmm. and like make a plan? Um, I talked to Tom about there's a place in Milton, I think, that you can buy used guardrail, but they take off like the interstate, and there's just like a company that sells used guardrail. Um, we have several spots in town that could use guardrail that's either damaged or fallen down. Um, but we, I definitely, there's like three or four spots up in East Target that could use guardrail. So that, I don't think that's a huge expense. Um, obviously, the sidewalks um, are expensive. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, you either have our roofer do it in the summer or we pay a company to come in to just do the sidewalks. But if we do the sidewalks in these targets, I'd like to do some other catch basins. Well, the, yeah, those when you see there, this yeah. report, you can see that some of the catch basins. I've seen them. Yeah. I don't need to I've seen them. You've yeah. seen them. Yeah. I don't know how many yeah. you guys have seen them. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's there. Yeah. Um, and then in that, you know, do a redoing the sidewalks and the bases would be nice to incorporate some sort of a, you know mapping. Their water system is not mapped at all on our town map where we have our water system in the town of Hardwick, in the village of Hardwick, water and sewer layer. Right. Yeah. Layer. right. Yeah. We don't have that layer to start with. And I think we, we should have that. For sure, that's something that we should think about talking with the fire district and working with them to try to get that done. So, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there, yeah. That needs to be addressed. Yeah, so, well, one but, of the places there's a guardrail, but it's totally buried by yeah. rivers, so just digging it out would be a project, right? Yeah, yeah. and you have good projects like that all I mean, like, all over, yeah, yeah. So, I don't, I mean, I and fine with improving walkability or village. Mm -hmm. I think we also just have a more comprehensive plan for the town of Hardwick. Right. There are our highest priority needs for sidewalks, guardrails, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's lots of places. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, down here on Wolkage Street, that three and a half or two and a half foot drop onto the roadway on the sidewalk. I mean, that's, that's another place that we should focus on. So there's a lot of stuff like that around. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. myself. There used to be a program called Safe Routes to Schools, which partially with funding sidewalks. I don't know if that program exists anymore, but have, are there any grants for sidewalks? Like there, um, yeah. There, this is a, a grant. Here. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. Um, and I don't know. Possibly, so every fall, late summer, fall, we transfer the transportation. Alternatives plan, but um, I think not positive that fund sidewalks, it definitely would fund bike paths mm -hmm. and other stuff. But, um, I know our swim bridge is a would be a good candidate for those funds. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. There's a, there are potentially good sources of grant funding out there for this stuff. We just need to figure out what our projects are. What it's going to cost for that Yeah, I think we thought we would hope we have that planning uh, intern person to help with that as some of our practice. And we definitely have to do that. 
the way I was thinking about the HR funds in terms of thinking about our funds equitably would be thinking about the population of the village. And so if you say the population is from this roughly 700, I don't know if that's accurate, then that would be you're working about $56,000 in ARPA funds, which we could spend over the next three years for various projects. But if we kind of earmark it now, maybe some of those funds would, if we can do more planning for it. Um, but that's kind of what I was thinking I had this probably describe that that way. But that number might be less or higher. I like that idea. Because that's how we got the ones. Yeah, what about the people who are in either of the two villages? Well, there's two, I mean that's kind of the rough. I think if we're gonna do anything for the village centers, then yeah. we focus on the you know how many people are considered the village center. I don't know if any other way. Just what, like $83 a person or something like that? You just cut everybody a check. You <laughs> <laughs> could do that too. Yeah, <laughs> take $83 off the cash and this or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next is the Harbor Area Food Pantry. Do you have questions about this with us? Heather's. Hi, Heather. Hey, uh, so did any of the select board have questions about the food pantry request? Heather, do you have anything you want to add to that wasn't in the in the request? Yeah, um, so in looking at the request, uh, the original request from the town, I guess I want to point out that um, our request covers both of those bullet points as far as maintaining vital public services. Um, the pantry is a vital public service and these funds would provide general operating expenses um, that right now there's an increase in food costs that we're all experiencing as individuals and as an organization. Um, so that creates a little bit of uncertainty, I think, um, as to where that's going. Um, another thing that, you know, we're experiencing changes and transitions in both our programming and our staffing. I'm, I'm new to this position um, and focusing my attention initially to make sure that we have the funding to meet the um, increased demand that we are seeing. Um, I'm not sure if that demand is coming from the increased costs. I would imagine it is. Um, and so I just wanted to point out those, those um, changes that, you know, creates, we're not an unstable organization in any way, but just to point out that those, all of those factors can create um, a little more instability. So these funds would help to, um, you know, help with our general operations costs um, and make sure that we can continue to serve our community. Okay, great. Heather, what's the, um, what are you guys thinking about long-term for bridging that gap? Well, I don't know that there's an actual gap yet, um, but I am like, I came into this position just a few months ago and I'm really, I am focusing initially um, really on raising funds, looking at grant opportunities. We are going to other towns for our for funds because we did expand our operations to um, a Craftsbury say and Albany. So we are approaching those towns as well as Greensboro um, to request funding and support from them. So it's it's more um, not that we're experiencing budget gaps, but with the increasing costs and demand and all of these changes happening, um, you know, just to make sure that we're still able to serve the community um, fully. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so next is the number six, the Harbor Conservation Commission, which has requested funds to do a natural resources inventory. 
if you have questions, support questions about this. No, we have um, the commission team. Uh, to a meeting. To a meeting. Unless the project's changed. Not that I'm aware of. Norma's here. Uh, Norma, yeah. are you here? Yes, I am. I'm here. Domestic Conservation Commission. Yes, I am. Is there anything you, you want to add to the request? I'm sorry. I'm having a, I think I have an unstable signal here. Would you, I can't hear you sometimes. Oh, so there, so maybe, maybe we should, we should be directing these funds to the uh, broad, NEK broadband. What? <laughs> she has an unstable connection. Well. Um. Norma, as I read the grant proposal, and I may have missed this, I had the sense that the, the cost of this is still pretty vague. Is that true? Well, it's only vague in that um, the information that, that we've gotten from natural resources people and um, other, other people who have done this um, is that the scope of what you can do obviously determines the end cost and the amount of public buy-in will have some effect. If a landowner is willing to, to have his or her property be part of the survey, the more of that you have, the, the greater the cost might be. Does that make any sense? It does. So the fifteen to twenty thousand dollars that that the grant proposal reference um, comes out of the conversations you've had with people and what this has cost them. Well, it, uh, Agency of Natural Resources is really the people that we talk to the most, and that's where you got that number. That's correct. We also um, talked with Michael Lou Smith who does this kind of work. And that is absolutely, he corroborated that that was a, you know, a, a, a correct guess. Thank you. Okay, this inventory is part of the town plan. Is it not one of the town plan goals? I, I'm sorry, I can't hear. If, if one of the challenge land goals, am I correct? I haven't, I need to go back and look, but um, the completing this inventory is. Yes. Are, are, you, are you talking about is this in the town plan? Yes. Yes, it is. And we referenced that in the application and gave you the quote. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the town plan calls for us to produce such a thing because it is. It is kind of a starting tool, a foundational tool. If you know what you have, then you can make smarter decisions about what you do about what you have. And in terms of natural resources, um, we only know every day how important our natural world is. And we want to be as smart as we can be about where we put our efforts. Thank you, Norma. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is the Southern the Harvard Downtown Commission. Uh, so I appreciate it for the Downtown Commission and uh, Mostly just in light of the fact that ARPA is uh, American Recovery Plan Act. So, and the focus was uh, economic development, uh, supporting local businesses, and keeping people in their houses. Um, so, I felt like it was an opportunity that we really wanted to pass it up. Just for this. Uh, could you give some idea about what the money you 
export. Um, it's a good word. I'm not certain that it would be uh, as specific as that, but I think it would be there to support um, that organization that's going to be formed, and potentially it would support part of the um, salary for the person who will be hired to run that. But, um, Director, 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 technician. Uh, and on that, you know, we can, uh, it's, it's kind of open. We can develop a grant program with it. We can uh, do additional, you know, events and community engagement stuff in downtown for the businesses to make it run. It's all economic development projects. It's big. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen when, we're, when we have that organization okay. up and running, and but we, it's coming. And we are just so, because some of these products overlap their budget as well. Are we already giving money to them to resolution? No. What's the year 23 budget? No. no. 21, 20, 25, 25, yeah. ish. We gave them 2500 mm -hmm. though, for the match products. Yeah, great. Yeah. 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 It was like, and we said, uh, come back to us if you have something more specific. Right? That's the basic thing. There's nothing to worry about. All right. So, yeah. Any other questions for the downtown commission? Uh, next is the townhouse. That was me, me as well. I guess. Um, so the townhouse, as most people know, we're in the midst of a capital campaign to make it fully accessible. That project is uh, ongoing, and hopefully we'll uh, put the money together. So we did two different two levels of support of request. Um, we're doing some of the work that. Uh, considered just uh, exterior maintenance work um, starting this fall and then early in the spring we'll remove the old fire escapes and so I included it for the, the cost of that and then restore the exterior facility and then change the doors on the second floor back to the original window that they would have been and um, what like high costs connected to that. Uh, otherwise, if we uh, wanted to do the other level uh, support, the 50000 to go into the budget for the capital project, then it would just further leverage our ability to raise that over 300000 But the, the um, and there's a, yeah. just thinking it through, so the so the larger project is at least three hundred thousand. Larger and that project, would just be a contribution yes. to it, right? But uh, and it could be the amount so that it doesn't come out of the capital improvement budget. Otherwise, the capital improvement budget is ten thousand for twenty twenty three. Yeah, um, we we'll just get us closer to that, right? And but but the other one, okay, so just so I'm clear in my mind, so you, you kind of out, outlined two different um, proposals, but the the first one about removing the fire stage, replacing the you know, repairing the siding, replacing the windows, that actually would stop the current water damage that's happening due to those uh, exterior fire stages damaging the building, right? Yeah, and has been. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So it would address some uh, but, serious. But at that, just sorry, maybe I'm just being dense, but that project would, is not part of the budget for the overall, or is, or is that in the Well, we like, separated, we tried to separate it yeah. from it. Um, so you need to do it separately. Yeah, okay. if, if part of that bid from that yeah. contractor. Because we thought we had to, but then we found out from the major funder meeting that we could do some things and that it would be considered maintenance and regular maintenance activity. So it wouldn't be um, 
you know, uh, having a uh, negative effect on potential funders. Like, you can't, because you can't start the project that you're asking for grant money for. So it, yeah. it would be yeah. considered just general reasons, and we would have to, we would end up getting but, into trouble. With but would, it, would it possibly reduce the scope of the larger project? Okay. Potentially, yes. Yeah. Those are my questions. Yeah. So that way you could use the general budget that we get to town us over here for other maintenance other issues. Okay. We have so a, a, a or well, that's not or maybe that maybe that was a bad idea, but yeah, <laughs> um, we have quite a few things on our facilities condition report that that could be addressed with that instead. Okay. Um, and if we have a current facility submission. Is that the book being allocates the budget? It's still for maintenance, right? Primarily? That's so the idea. Basically, for everything. Right. It, never, it, it never addresses everything. So, as soon as you fix something, you're able to piece yeah. that in the buffers for some other thing, it's always good. Right, because that's in a that fund. Right, where we have things broken out the line items, so you can capital improvement. Yeah. yeah. So, like this building, for example, we have yeah. a lot more. It's the ten thousands in capital improvement. The the maintenance budget that we really should look at for all of our town buildings. It has like five hundred dollars in it. It's not. It doesn't address anything ultimately. Yep. That's maintenance. All right. Excellent. Next is nine Judevine Library. Uh, questions about the Judevine. Well, you mentioned Eric and Eli are different than the application, or there was yes. So I had. So I had a question because when I read the application, it looked to me like the budget at the end was fully funded. Right. Yeah. So I asked Joey Smith, who's um, uh, I think she's president of the library board, and she sent a new. Let me just uh, this. Bear with me. So she sent a, a revised budget to Pat that showed their um, gap. So the revive the budget that's more broken. So what happened was Jody said that she had had a column to the right that didn't appear like it got cut off where she had no, noted what was what. So um, the what she put in the where she broke it out differently, so it's additional rows. And so what it appeared to be all applicant contribution, and it looked like that was the remainder of what they needed. She broke that out so that now instead of being one bulk thing, it was like 1.8 million ish. So now she's got applicant contribution already in hand is 939,000. Uh, to be decided, it's 440, and France expected in 2023 is 500,000. So it looks so they, it, to me, what that breaks down to is we got the 939 in hand, they're dead. A level of confidence about another half million grants, so that it's moving actively looking for a report. And they still have not did the project yet. They did do the project, okay. and so it came in higher again because that's what projects are doing. Yeah. So they did it, it was too high, it took a year to raise money, did the thing again, and it went up. So they still have a gap. Still yeah, it's still about the same over. So you could raise the money again and we take a year and then you have another big cap. Just do that forever. Mm -hmm. And we have 
committed the bond to them, but then we also committed last year to commit uh, the general fund, fund mm -hmm. 100. That's that's for the word. They came to us. Um, there was too much in the shortfall. The shortfall was like 400,000 because they hadn't been confirmed to the air mark. Yeah. So we did not. Um, we did not. Well, there were two requests. The second one we turned it down, but the first one we said if they needed it, that we, it was, I will look back to this. Okay. That's for you to research because your memory is better. <laughs> Obviously, not that much better. Well, you have some memory. Yeah, but... yeah I think because it was the same time at the Swing Bridge, or that space was two almost two years ago. Yeah. That was the time that we had to over in the general fund. And then I believe we committed. You mean the fund balance? The fund balance, sorry. Okay. Um, we we thought we committed something alive. I think we did commit that. Uh, Okay. I mean, there are a lot of things I don't remember. Uh, anything else about the library request? Uh, Yes. Four ideas. Correct. Correct. There was a really specific that she said 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 she she officially withdrew. Oh. Um, I thought it was uh, good. There were some very good. So, well, very so good. something to consider, but she, yeah, I, when I sent it to the she said that's a good idea. That's yeah. another project that's going to be. Yeah. yeah. So we could talk about some of those things that were on our original list that yeah. didn't get applications specifically made for them. That's but I think they're still, they're still on our list. They're still on our list. I just want to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next is 11 NEK broadband. Uh, and this is this one. Yep, got it. Uh, so, uh, this request outlines a couple different possible scenarios of how um, our funds could be used to, uh, I think it's just to accelerate a process that's going to happen anyway. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's so overdue. Yeah. Can you get a high speed internet to my house tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you may be on one of those. I have oh, a gray yeah. circle on that map. Yeah. How's that, Paul? Um, <laughs> I can't get any <laughs> specific service. I know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, do they have questions? Or? This does accelerate it. Wouldn't it be easier to receive this and get started sooner? Is that the point? Oh, okay. uh, that's part of the point. What's the other part of the point? Well, the other part of the point is there's state money that's going to go to other towns if we don't get the match from them to this one. So, am I right? This is a three to one match? Two to one. Well, Every dollar you put in will result in three dollars of investment because the state will give a dollar and North East Kingdom Broadband will give a dollar from our existing funds. Okay, so this is 33% of and, whatever. And every dollar given now by towns through IPA will result in less bonding necessary and ultimately lower cost for everybody who is receiving service. And the ultimate vision for NEK broadband would be that in some number, of, like in a decade, or like anybody in Harvard could potentially have service from NEK broadband, or is that not the That's scenario? NEK broadband is working to 
serve all locations served by electric service that don't currently have high speed options. So it's unlikely, at least before 2030, that we would serve places with Comcast, even though their upload speeds are low. It's unlikely that we will serve people that sell these equations besides to bring their city and fiber in their next city. So, you know, we don't plan to overbuild. We're really going after the places that the commercial providers have ignored because it's unprofitable to serve. Right. Thank you for that. Yep. And just a really clarifying question, Paul. So the range, the range is pretty big in the ask. It's 30,000 to 140,000. So the town could theoretically yeah. choose to provide any amount within that range, and then those dollars would be matched the same way, or are there tiers that we would need to commit to? There's specific tiers. Were you to offer us less than the minimum 30,000? or something over one year or less than the next, we would reject that offer and ask to negotiate down to the next year. It just, it, it just won't work in terms of how the state funding works and, oh, and reaching well, open space or Yeah, you don't want to tell saying, yeah, you want it to be we, uh, so, <laughs> I mean, I see in your comments people say well we might do a portion or whatever but if it were a percentage of requests we end up with those two and we were getting some funds. Well can you just remind us of what those tiers are so don't have in our packet. So could I could I respond by addressing comments and see if that doesn't cover part of it. So first of all thank you very much for asking for these requests. I think all of the requests I'm hearing seem important to the town, so I think it's kind of a difficult job on fully everything. Um, I will say I requested mention it, but the internet was certainly mentioned the town slayer, so there is a limited way. Um, one error in our submission, it talked about building what we call an OLP, which is the equipment cabinet in Hardwick. Hardwick would be served by OLPs in Craftsbury, which exists already, and Walden, which will be built independent of this funding request. So you can I think that showed on the map. The map shows it directly. Okay. Um, the question about people benefiting indirectly, we did say 100% in the form and see it matched. The attachment basically says studies have shown that having high speed internet increases property value, which says it's the entire time. So it's a stretch, but you yeah. have to do that. We've had some people argue recently that increasing property value is just a benefit. I understand <laughs> that. And Especially. It doesn't benefit them unless they sell. And yeah. if my property values go up, then I pay more taxes and it benefits everybody else. So yeah, right. it depends right. how you look at it. Yes. So anyway, um, can we make so let's not get into that. Um, let's see. So yes, as far as I'll wait for Kaylee to come back. Um, so the point of requester has four hundred twenty eight thousand pipeline. We have guaranteed two hundred eighty eight nine thirty two or two thirds of that. If being at this meeting with this request counts as the pipeline. Then we have that full amount, but that amount is higher by the amount we've asked you for. By um, the maximum amount, then? Well, by funding all. I mean, the, 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 we, we have matching funds available until September for the maximum amount. So if you find 139, we've got 288, 932 to bring the total. Sorry, you got 200, but 288, right? Call it 289. 289, thank you. And does that September date mean that there would be uh, imminent construction? No, the September date means that the state's match goes back into the pool for people who haven't asked yet to request it. So we could make a second request, but it could also go to people, other people. Thank you. Okay. So 
what we've said is our nor our, our existing build timeline is to 2030. If these funds come, the builds that you commit to will be completed by the end of 2026 at the latest. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's quite likely that some of it would happen next year, maybe all of it, maybe not. And once we agree to this, I hate to say this, but as a public entity, we're going to have some contract negotiations about how this is going to happen, when the deadlines will be, when we're going to get the money. We can give you contracts that we've signed with other towns, or and we've signed two already. So, but it's not as though we're just going to take the check and draft it. You'll have a conversation with us about what this means and what we're going to get. Like 2026, before the 726. The commitment would be that anybody in those little circles of the line show will be able to subscribe. And I'll also mention that opportunity two, which is included in the middle of 30,000, covers Route 16 up past Pumpkin Lane and Riverside Farm, not all the way to East Hardway, but it does include Pumpkin Lane with a total of 22 addresses. I believe. So there is some East Hardway. Funding in oh, you should have held that thought. Well, <laughs> he was trying to. I know he was trying to. We'll come back to we'll come, yeah, we'll circle back to that. So, and as far as the amounts go, the tiers were 30000 which covered East Hardwick and, uh, and Heartbeat. Heart, basically up towards Heartbeat. And the little beige section that crosses over into Walden will be done at no charge. <laughs> Once hardwood gets lit, we'll light that for that little piece of hardwood down the ward hill where that is along. So, it's coming slowly but surely. Paul, rather than my diving back into the application, which I could, what is tier two? Uh, hold on. Tier two is. Uh, Route 16, oh, tier two. Sorry, it is, I believe, the west of Route 14, west and uh, so. And how much money is that? That's the real Tier two is opportunity three. Oh, it's $74,333 up Richmond Road. It's basically Richmond Road. That's not west of Route 14. No, opportunity four at 35000 is the last hill. That's 48 without broadband, eight for our the opportunity two or tier two opportunity three. It's 48 people without broadband, eight people priority, 40 already served by something, but not enough to be there. And then West Hill is 35 without broadband, including two priority people for 35,000. There you go. Can I just? Maybe I should, but I'm going to ask anyway. So the I get the, going up the heartbeat one, which yep. is a small one. Yep. Does that not connect to the original no one because there are not electrical? There are not holes there already. Is that the issue? Okay. Uh, yeah. None of this is the essence of last power. Okay. Okay. None of this has gone into a final design phase. It has all, it's only been surveyed by LIDAR and state maps. So the ground truth thing won't happen until it either shows up on our plan or you make a commitment and it shows up on our plan. Okay. Right. Awesome. More questions about the I need to know where we're at with this. We need to by December. September. 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 So September. What? We will. We'll need time to submit an application yeah. to the state broadband board. They'll need time to consider it. I mean, realistically, the September date is irrelevant because oh. we need to know soon. I mean, we should figure. I think it's early September. I don't know. 
30 days from now, you can probably make it happen. Okay. Got it. And I, you know, I'll say this this will be done whether this is funded or not. It's just a matter of when it will get done and how it will get there. So, last one on our list is 12 um, for cybersecurity. And I think TC submitted this one. And, uh, where it is in our thing. Four. I know my comment. No. I don't want to really speak too publicly about this, but our network is severely uh, vulnerable. So my feeling on that is we could allocate money from here, but if we don't, we should have to just get it done. I've got a quote here for $17,116 for just the hardware yep. to protect our network okay. and all of our control buildings. So compared to a ransomware attack, that is cheap. Yeah. And so that's like the one time cost. And then, so we had put in this year $2,300, um, which we actually got a grant through the LCT to have a company come in and do like a assessment we saw in the application. So that's going to be done probably later this month or next month. It's on the schedule for them to come in and put a device on and then give us a report, you know, showing us weaknesses, vulnerabilities. And then from there, but, um, we could get that quote for kind of all the harder piece of it. Um, I think it's something that we can't keep putting off. Yeah. I didn't even know we were putting it off. More. Well, it just kind of, I mean, I think since I've been here probably the last two or three years, we've talked about it among our offices and stuff, but it just, it needs to be moved up to the top of the priority list. Yes. It's not if, you know, like, yeah. I, I when that's from the sales yeah. But so, like in our regular budget, we would have our sort of annual fees. Like we end up contracting with a company to do something monthly. That would be like our regular town budget. But this is sort of a one-time purchase of all the hardware that we need. It's really so this is I would say, I mean, I'm open to using our funds for this. I think it's a reasonable use. But if for some reason we don't want to use our funds for this, then I feel like it's. We need to use. We need to get that. This is in fund balance. So you need to get I can do it. Project. I can do it tomorrow. Just for the, just for the yeah. whoever has to come in and work on it. Like, don't yeah. have to get it. Yeah. yeah. But just, I've got one here. You can roll. Yeah. And if you need to come to us and, and say, you know, we need, I propose we take the money from, that, I don't care. But yeah. that's, that's something that we need to, we need to back down and patch us a little bit in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is, Kathy? Is this going to project the voting machines and all that? The voting machines are standalone. I don't think that yeah, they are vulnerable. But the, 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 the office so. office phone, I mean, yeah. Those are supported. The voting machines are supported by their own security. And they're not plugged into our network. Yeah. yeah. So but, they're, yeah. they're only vulnerable on certain things. <laughs> no, that's not a good situation. And Paul, do you have a question about that? I had a comment. As someone who works in this area professionally, whatever you do to evaluate it, you need to look at the scope of everything that's connected ever to town internet. So everybody's home computers is connected. Everybody who does town email on their personal computers with the map stuff as a matter of public record, your scope of work for the evaluation yep. and your policies need to include everybody and everything. That's not right. Oh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to not consider everything. But yeah, keep that rolling, please. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay, so there ended the review of the uh, ARPA request that we received in this round. Um, as Sherry pointed out, we did have a list of projects that um, that we had presented when we did our informational meetings that were already projects that were already underway that were potential. Um, projects to come as well. I feel very strongly that they're off the table. 
some of these people have been here twice. While well, we were just trying to figure out what we were doing with this, they came and presented their projects. We took a look at it. We said, whoa, we really need parallel information from everybody from this. And so they went back and they filled out this, this request form that we put together and have come here. And, and I think just in fairness, that they put all this work in and for us to say, oh yeah, well, by the way, we're going to pull this and this and this into it also. Yes, it was there at the information meeting, but there was no project. So I think we should stick to the 12 projects that have actually made, have actually told it So if we can't uh, get the swinging bridge back up without um, some additional um, funds, but it's one, not going to... We go someplace else. Well, I think we could also think about uh, we have to have the conversation with those practices. We don't necessarily have to level fund the 12 practices that we have here. It's still um, potentially have some funds left over so that way, if we have another round of ARPA funds, then the town can apply. Let's say we did with the cybersecurity and fill out the application for the other application for that project. Are there going to be more ARPA funds in the future? No, so I this think is this, yeah, they're the just the infrastructure programs to build back better than we were with the roots. Right, so this is it. I've got my list. I'm <laughs> <laughs> all laid out. <laughs> oh, how do you want to do in, that? In addition to this, or? Oh, based on what just, we've done just in this meeting. Well, yeah. Beyond, I pretty much know where I am on that. Yeah. And I I think this is a community process for everybody. Yep. Let's get it done today and be done with it. Instead of, oh well, you know, we do $250,000 today and we'll be another $100,000 right. later. Just, just do it. Yes. You're a Nike person. You understand. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, barely just to show you with. Uh, oh, wait. I told her. Wiz was oh, great to me. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. That was my question. Can you, what were you going to say? Um, no, I guess if that's the. Okay, I think it's Sherry's point. I think it makes sense for Wiz's point to focus on the 12 right now. And if you have anything left over, then certainly that is to come. So, right. I've got $56,000 left over. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good we could hire somebody to plan a new town garage. <laughs> there you go. So I have zero, zero dollars left over. But I, do, but I do think that there's, and maybe this is not the time to have this conversation, but to, we talked a little bit about it in the very beginning. I think for some, it's a little bit different for the projects that are going through the town, right? The, for the commission, the commission is a committee of the town. So it's technically we're holding those funds until we have to pay for them. But I do think we have a conversation about how we're writing the check to other organizations that are not part of the town. So whether that's like those who have like the conservation commission oh, would as an example, basically as an example is would it, provide cases of the yeah, receipt yeah, or with an yeah, estimate yeah. and then they would pay that. But I think we should have a conversation about how the funds are going to organizations that are not town. Right, but, because once, well, but once we do that, it's sort of out of our control. It's sort of like a trust thing. You assume that they're going to spend it the way that they're supposed to, because as we talked about, once we write the check, that's spent on our hands. How obvious is it to do it on the basis of your Which is what all grants are going to do. Yeah, all these grants are reimbursement. You send so, money and we'll reimburse you. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something we that's I think we could do. Yeah. Not in all situations, but yeah. some of them would be able to be reimbursed. So Kathy's question. Doesn't our doesn't the the stuff you got from the federal government about who's eligible and blah 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 well, right. telling you how it needs to be dispersed and accounted for? 
Right. And that's what I said. Once we give it to an organization, it's spent on our end because we took the standard allocation, meaning that it was going to be for government services, which yeah. is very broad. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so if, you, if you were a yeah. town that got less than $10 million, you yeah. could take the standard allowance. Of, performance right. for the, for the when we do our annual reporting, we will still have to um, create some narrative it, you know we gave x to whatever because this benefits but you know there, there is still some reporting but it's not a matter of providing receipts to show how Prosperity community care center spent the money we gave you know it's just in but, but the town could establish a requirement that the organization file a report and provide sure. pictures of work done that we can all that yeah. we could easily do sure. Yeah. All right. So, um, all right. I will defer to folks who were here about because I missed the meetings where this process was set up. So this is the process, and we have not really stuff. We really have gotten this. Part. We basically got here. Yeah. This is this is this is. So, because I I didn't understand. I guess that this was all like. Anyway, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. There are a lot of other things. I mean, we could spend the entire eight hundred fifty-five thousand on. I can think of. Fantastic. I can think of four projects that that would not completely fund, <laughs> even though they already have millions of funding. Well, I thought one of the goals was that we were hoping to actually, you know. Try to fund things that would actually complete it, but to get it to that last, um, oh, you know, yeah. so that we actually complete, rather see than some things money. get completed yeah. rather than just giving, you know, spreading it out so thinly that everybody still has to chase and leverage more. Yeah. Um, my my is to spend, is to fund as much as possible. Of what people ask for, or have someone actually know, rather than saying, "Oh, you want ten thousand dollars? Well, we'll give you five, and you can go find that." I also, while I'm talking, will say that I talked to Jody Blue Smith yesterday, and she seemed very, very confident that they are going to get all the money they need. They're going to have to borrow money on the bridge loan until it comes through, but they have it. And so I would like to suggest that we just take out that three hundred thousand dollars, and that means that I mean that makes the conversation that much easier because without that three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, we've got a request for four hundred and something for a three hundred and fifty-five thousand dollar pool. Um, I guess that's my thoughts. So yeah, that's great. It makes sense to me. It's also, I think Danny has a comment so the library just that the town's already committed yeah. a lot of funds to that. So just like mention his email about that. Um, so I guess the item that I would really want to discuss is that any paper update and how much um, that seems like that we've got some choices there. Um, so I'm just curious to listen to what's thinking about that. But um, if the library, that, that would certainly be easier. Make it a lot easier. And Tracy, when you put the summaries together, you can wind them up in a packet. Yes. They're in the order of the score. In the order of the score. Yes. So it's um, highest on top. Then. In the order to that, um, I think we should parse out a little bit. So I can say, um, <laughs> yeah. I got it. <laughs> There were a lot of questions about the grant commission and what specifically that money is going for. So, um, but since that, I'm sorry, that grant commission is still part of the town, but it's working on the community's own money market. Is that what we are? Yeah. So, the downtown, when we achieve downtown designation, which is what the downtown commission is uh, working at, right? We do. Yep. Um, there won't, I don't envision. There be a downtown commission and a downtown organization. I assume and hope that people that are uh, involved in the downtown commission right now 
will potentially be part of the board of that organization, and the downtown commission will not need to exist. Okay, so we will have a downtown organization that's doing all of the things around what that, you know, what the mission of that is. Okay, so theoretically, right, right now we decided to provide funds to the commission. It would be held by the town of Portwick until that nonprofit was created or until there were things that need to be expended until that point. Is that basically what? Uh, yeah, I think it's not as yeah. organization right now. So it works as a commission. Okay. The, the, the planning grant, the municipal planner that's doing this work now, is going to develop a strategy to the five year strategy to fund the downtown. Okay. So essentially, we are paying somebody right now to develop a funding strategy for that group. How much and that person that? would like to, that's the municipal planning grant. So that planning could include any of the, any of the ARPA funds that we chose to give to the downtown commission that could be part of her strategic plan. And do you know what you're paying for right now? We're paying for the municipal planning grant amount, $22,000. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And she works for the town until okay. December. Yeah. And then we apply for downtown designation and hopefully get it. Okay. Um, I would in the, so just my agree on the comments with that one. I think that when that project's ready, I would feel more comfortable providing funds to that. Um, whether that's like um, but the fifty thousand I I think also from the comments. Day, email to the comments and the application. I think maybe something more like 10 would be a good start for our funds. And then, sure. if that also helps to fund other infrastructure projects, it seems pretty big right now as to what is going on. I had a lot of questions about the, the grants and, and anyway, it was, I think it's a totally worthy project, but I don't know if right now. I that. think it's a uh... It would be difficult to make a decision about that today. Certainly, um, we're looking at having a presentation on from Heather Carrington, the consultant, um, in our August select board meeting. Most likely after that, it might be more clear what the what the possibilities are and the needs are. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I think it's hard to. I, I'm having a little bit of a meltdown thinking about making a decision on all of these in the next half an hour. That's what I was just looking at. And I, I don't really have all the afternoon for this. I just have so, to say it. So I, I'd say that one way we could proceed is we could start. I think uh, OB has a list. I think Wiz has a list. And we could start with kind of like we do with our town budget. We could throw up a well, if you could read it up in case you could put it up. We need a drum roll. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Something no, like no, 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 no,
Okay. okay. So you want a motion on that? So no. Well, I want to, I want to sort through the whole thing first. I'm not going to sleep. Because holy cow, like, how are you going to know? Okay, so that would be the proposal is potentially 139. So, second on our list, if we was the counties. Oh, that wasn't first. That was second. There yeah, was no in their rankings. In the rankings, and we will get that evaluation. Yeah. So the no, the no, 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 Everybody liked that, according to comments, everybody liked the townhouse as a project. I particularly like the idea of getting those, getting those uh, entire scapes off of there because you can just see it robbing the building. Yeah. And that's, I find that a little bit painful to look at. But the other, and I don't know. So, what do you have? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, you guys. We're totally talking. Yeah, no, we won't. Okay, so we're just putting this down. Third, the Calgary branch number one. So, I did 50 for the same. So, oh, I did 50. <laughs> okay, well, straight 10. I mean, so, I'll give you a prime example. Last night, I was at a fire district meeting. They have their annual meeting scheduled for next month. They have no, they have a place in the back of the church which holds maybe comfortably 15 to 20 people. Maybe 15, like comfortably. Inside. Inside. And the Grange, it, there is a meeting place. And they can't hold the, the, the annual meeting at the Grange because it's not accessible. Yeah, I hear you. I'll yeah. The only question I have, maybe for the range folks, is are there any available programs from like the national range to? Is there still a national range? Mm -hmm. There's a website. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a state range too. But the, the kinds of grants that are available are in the thousand dollar range. In fact, we, we got that one. We got that one. <laughs> okay. So okay. So, 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 yeah. so it's really on. So we can do it. I had another ask if we committed 40,000 for the range, can you guys buy some box stands for the windows for those hot summer nights? <laughs> Did you enjoy a show at the range? I, I may have. have. I, may have <laughs> I may have been. There may be photo documentary evidence. <laughs> that, that. And, and really, that's a building. Like, that is, that means so much. That just that. As yeah, a cultural yeah. building. Yeah. It's historical. Uh, just folklore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's the only real meeting space. In there. So, I, no, I have it at 50, but we did, I thought it was 50, though. They were the answer for 40. We had it at 40. Sorry. So, so that's another 10,000 for the town plan for the garage. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> just bump that up. So, what was the next one? Our cybersecurity, and I think the town has other points that they can pay. I think it absolutely needs to be done. Okay. So, but there's money, but there's money someplace else. Okay. So, well, so right that. The right hang on, hang on, hang on. I just want to hear you agree, Jason. Well, we have to come from the fund balance. So yep. And yeah. the fund balance is still fat. And just in, to use a really rough right? Yeah. So, at uh, yeah. uh, uh, all, we'll have to do something more together that's cool. what we're looking to address that. Then it's going to be like kind of an unbudgeted item. So, yeah. Okay. But in any case, we just need to do that. Yep. So, so which doesn't want to take a year. I'm not right with that. So wait for it. So now we're up to food pantry. You're going so fast. No, we all have a lot. I know, I know. Carry on. Um, I actually have a hard time with this because this is purely operating. And, and you know, when this goes away, what are they going to do? Are they going to, this is one time. I'm not speaking in full sentences. This is one time money to the town, and I would prefer to spend it on one time projects as opposed to well, more of an investment over. Yeah. More of a capital. So, if we're going to give them something, I would say the minimum of 12, 1 30, but I don't think there's any, you know, it's their operating budget. That's, it's not, it's, and then we also have the opportunity to do a larger appropriation in the past at the town meeting, you know, and then the voters get to decide on the, you know. And next year we should have a real town meeting so people right. can actually discuss. Yeah.
I think we can address their needs. Yeah, I think that yeah, I think that those things are just things that should be done. Right, right, right. That's on me. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's pretty Agenda to determine what those things are that we can take on. 
I also, I, I also, I think I, maybe I, I don't know, but I, I don't agree just with the with the um, statement that the East Harvick roads are, are worse than any of the rest of the roads. Uh, <laughs> Have you seen the catch basin out here on Church Street? Yeah. Have you? I mean, Have you? Or that they don't get, I mean, no, I mean, just... Montgomery Road and Harvey Farms Road got oh, a lot of attention. The dirt roads get a lot of attention. That was not, and it's not three page. I think it's just important that the sidewalks are real so you can yeah. Yeah. But I think so that that's true just... everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you see the downtown the road. There are no sidewalks in Target. Yeah. I will say that yeah. on the yeah. record. There are also no sidewalks to the trailer park. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There are lots of places we yeah. don't have sidewalks. Maybe, Eric, it's more of a matter of communicating what we talked about yeah. already. Because I think there is just a feeling of not having as much. I mean, super sure it's just read out, which is great. But maybe we just communicate to, you know, and I don't understand why East Hardwick is not part of the town park. <laughs> so then shouldn't it just be part of like our general road plan? Right. That's why I said this is on me and the road foreman to, yeah. to make sure that we are doing things in East Hardwick. Okay. I will say that there were there were sidewalks in East Hardwick. There were wonderful photographs of the village with beautiful sidewalks. And there were sidewalks on North Main Street too. Yeah. Right? And there are. Right. We've got one more bill. When I say they're not, they were terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Twenty-five million dollars for four seats. For the four seats. So I mean that's 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 a lack of education. You want to bring it up? Yeah. Cherry rounds to five. Sure. I do. I do think it's important, though, to just as we do a lot of grant work, that we should just stick to the requested amount because if we start wrapping up or down on different applications than the for, I think that is not ideal. So okay. I think we should stick to the request. Okay. All right. Eric, that's, that's fair. Oh, all right. Uh, so I'm at a total a total sum of two ninety two. Um, but we got more to spend. Liz <laughs> says we can't spend um things that are not that this is one of five. I'm still um, <laughs> concerned about the infrastructure in this house. Am I allowed to speak? You are, you raise your hand back. <laughs> okay. Um I really appreciate the openness, especially to get to see how this process works. Um I, I do want to say just we are a startup. But I've been doing this for a really long time, and I've been mostly doing it unpaid. And I do think that the town should consider this as an ongoing possible role or something to allocate some money towards, um, because cultural programming is a necessity for quality of life. I know we have a rec committee, um, but it's somewhat limited what they do um, and where you know who they touch um, in the community. And you know, obviously, we feel like. Being a resident in that building is going to do a lot for Main Street and a lot for downtown, but that's really only one part of it. The programming that I've been doing for years and years is really what this is going to continue to just be a, an umbrella for. So I, I'm not, you know, trying to argue any of this conversation. I'm just saying like bigger, longer term thinking. I, I would love for that to be something that ever gets put into a conversation. Um, it, it's just like the ongoing process of that like how do you hold that as a community because as sherry pointed out it was in the town plan and, and in a lot of those conversations you know ultimately it's, it's, i'm just going to say it, it may not go over well but giving the downtown position the amount of money is potentially a way to further support downtown activities and that's one of them um, in one of our main storefronts um, yeah, if I could get one second just to wrap up. I, I don't really, you know, personally as a member of town, I think all of these are great projects, but I do want to say with broadband, which you've appointed me to represent on your behalf. This is an opportunity to bring two extra dollars for money from Harvard to an organization that 
step through state statute is not able to come to the town department to ask for any money. So these microphones are a one time chance to bring two extra dollars. To town. I, I think it's a valuable thing, but as I said, it's going to happen eventually. So uh, it's the hardest. I'm not sure how I would vote if I were to buy another place to put on. Really honest. Interesting perspective. Yeah. You were good, you were good for a vegetarian. Well, well, no, 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 yeah, but it takes a lot longer. But hopefully, still has to come to work every day. Yeah. Well, I might. <laughs> my kids might be in college before they get high speed, so I mean, it's like. It's better. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Are these in the decisions? I don't know. These are proposed. Uh, and then the remaining amount is 355, is that right? Is 307 and 57. The remaining amount of our proposal after the water project is 355. So that would leave us with 48. But in this scenario, she's saying 48. 40, 48. So potentially put towards some other thing. Right. <laughs> The bridge. Or the yellow bridge. I move that we vote these amounts just read out of the funds to the the projects of the project. Second. She's doing it as a slate. I'm That's doing it as a slate. In a second. Comments? Discussion? You want to go to, you want to have comments and amend the motion? No, I just, I, um, I think we got to table it until the 21st of that board meeting. <laughs> I do think, I do think Danny would appreciate working on it. And I don't, I mean, we have, the two two organizations that we've not funded to their request. It is we can we approve all the ones that we funded to the request and then review those two and maybe we add more to those in the very first. Is that um, but we don't have to spend it until 2026. So, right, that's maybe what I put it out there, you know, maybe that we'll decide that we, you know, we apply for a, a grant for the memorial building roof, which is on that old list that was that list doesn't want it. But still, we, we'll need a match for that grant. We'll need a match. And it's slavery. So, it's going to cost some money. It's 100 years. Right? So, um, yeah, I just, yeah, we just it so right. you're, are you kind of saying it wouldn't hurt to leave some money in there because we have other projects? You can't leave money in there. Let's just okay. do this and, you know, like not even 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. And that would be a <clears throat> All right, all in favor of approving this um, slate of ways to spend the ARPA funds, please uh, say aye. 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 That's everyone. So, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for a lot of hard work. Could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it is. Um, well, yeah, speaking of worse, Sorry. Yeah, you guys can't leave just because you got your money. So, yeah. It's an easy way for people to add. Congratulations, son. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You see, Paul, it was worth your time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next is Blackboard reports. reports. Chamber players, first concert this Thursday. People uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> need to, you know, if they're interested in the Chamber players concert, they need to contact the Chamber players. The town has to not do the ticket sales, nothing like that. I'm going to be out of town anyway, so don't be following my number. <laughs> Oh, sure. we'll get there. Uh, next Tuesday, there's a, um, a community <coughs> fun race with trails for mountain bikers and runners, and uh, registration starts at 5 in the Kingston parking lot. Bikers go off at 545, runners go off at 6. Um, come out and enjoy the trails if that's your thing. Um, uh, another report is Yellow Barn is uh, being rejiggered, it's nearly rejiggered, working with uh, trying to get the project scope shrunk down to the budget. Um, 
the we had if we're still working with our all our funders to make sure they're still in for the stated amount, even though we've um, adjusted the physical right the physical structures, we still have the same tenants and roughly the same program. Um, the one thing that's going to be a challenge, assuming all the funders are in, or the one thing that's going to be an immediate challenge is that it will need money up front to do uh, the be to pay our um, architectural and engineering fund to redesign and get the bid package out again so we can read it. So um, just in round numbers, that's probably going to cost a total of about 100,000, of which we're going to need about 50,000 soonish. Anyway, so looking for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna give a pitch for twenty five, <laughs> um, but we talked about that some other time. Anyway, that's just sort of the update. Anybody else with reports or old business or new business? So, uh, I would like to congratulate us on a civilized process that was conducted with almost no. Um, Raising the voices. Almost. Almost. Who raised their voice? We've never done an ice cream about you. That's true. We've never done this so before. We, we, we've made this up as we went along. And I think it's what we're talking about. So, yay, us. <laughs> Raising your voice is not a sign of like. You know, yeah, it's, it, I mean, you see what is the House of Commons and yeah. I mean, they raise their asses all the time. You know, I, I think this was great. Yeah, there's, I wish we had more. I wish we could meet every month and go on. Yeah, we'll But, yeah. Um, so, what about a motion to enter executive session for one PSA? Three thirteen to discuss the one on Friday. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, we're going to go down. Wait, did everybody say aye? Anybody opposed? Yes. We're going to the third session. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah. Is he going to put his office in the building? Isn't it nice? What are we trying?